Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. You can do better than say good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That's not like everybody that time. <laughs> all right. Um, before I want to start, I want to give all glory to God. Because yeah, yeah. he's the one who deserves all the honor, all the praise, all the glory. And I know if it wasn't for him, me and my family would not be here today. So I just want to give all praises to him. And uh, let us go up for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that we are all gathered here tonight to study your word. I pray that you just please touch my lips. Speak through me tonight. Lord, I pray that it is not me who is speaking, but you who are speaking through me. Hide me behind the cross. And I pray that everyone here tonight will not see me, but they'll see you. Lord, please give me the right words to say. And I move all selfishness, bitterness, and all the evilness that is in me. And I pray that you just please use me completely tonight. I pray that you just please open up everyone's hearts and their minds tonight so they, they will receive this message. And I pray that we will be blessed, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come in here and fill us and set us on fire. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, the 19th chapter. Luke chapter 19, going to be verses 1 through 3. When you get there, say amen. Luke chapter 19. Verses 1 through 3. All right, Luke the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to go ahead and read. It says, Since Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. I'm going to start right there. Here's the whole picture. Jesus is over here. He's going throughout the whole entire world just preaching the gospel. He's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. The eyes of the blind man can see. The lame can walk. If you just touch the hem of his garment, you'll be healed. Jesus, he has all power in his hand. He's going throughout the whole, you know, throughout the whole land, preaching, teaching, telling others about him, telling others about the kingdom. And he's traveling everywhere. Here, there, everywhere. He's just walking around wondering with his disciples. And everywhere that he goes, there's a crowd that follows him. Remember that. Everywhere that Jesus went, there was a crowd that followed him. All right. Now, among this crowd, I want to divide the crowd up. Over here is a group of people. They're here because they love Jesus. All right. They follow him everywhere he goes. And these are his disciples. They, they listen to him speak. They watch the miracles that he do. And they love him with all of his, their heart. The next, next, next group over here are those who want to be healed. They come to Jesus because they want to be healed from their sickness. They want Jesus to heal one of their family members. They want Jesus to touch their children, bless their children. So those are the ones who follow Jesus to be healed. Then there's some over here who hate Jesus. Just wish he was dead. He he was gone. Like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the the teachers, they were jealous. So they wanted to get rid of Jesus. They they said he claimed to be the Son of God. They did not know who he was. So they wanted to get rid of him. And that's why they followed him around to catch him in some type of sin. You know, to get rid of him. Said so, you know, cause some type of rebellion. Then there was some over here. Who followed Jesus because they wanted to get something to eat. <laughs> Do you remember when Jesus spent the 5,000? Yeah. yeah. How many fish? Two fish and five loaves of bread. He fed 5,000 men. Not even count women and children. 5,000 men. And the Bible says he had 12 baskets left over. And when the people saw the 12 baskets left over, they followed Jesus and said, Jesus, can I have a little bit more of that bread? <laughs> so whenever they got hungry, they went to go see where Jesus was. Then over here, the last group I want to talk about are those who followed Jesus because they heard the rumors. 
They heard that Jesus could heal the sick, raise the dead. You know, he could forgive sins. And they wanted to see Jesus. They followed Jesus just to see who he really was. If all the rumors were true. And among this group of people was a man by the name of Zacchaeus. Now let me tell you a little bit about Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he was very rich. You want to know why he was very rich? Because he was a tax collector. And not only was he just any ordinary tax collector, but he was the chief tax collector. So that means he was very rich. Like my brother said, he was bad rich. <laughs> and so, you want to know how he got so rich? You really want to know? Now don't do what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus, the way he got rich, he went around, went around and he stole money from people. He would, I mean, the people had to pay their taxes to, you know, the king or the Romans or whatever. And so he would get the taxes, but he would add a little bit more, or should have said a lot more, for himself. Uh -huh. So that's why he was very rich. He was a thief. Uh -huh. He stole things from people. Uh -huh. And you know, if somebody comes up and just say they came up and took your shoe and walked away, or took your cell phone and said, what, what would you think? What would you do? Would you become their best friend? I didn't think so. You're still my friend, right? <laughs> and you can imagine Zacchaeus. He was a thief, he was a crook, and everybody hated him. Nobody even wanted to see his face. They just wish he was dead, you know, gone, out, out of the city. And how do you think that made Zacchaeus feel? Do you think that he was overjoyed, he was happy, because nobody wasn't his friend? I don't think so. Now you can answer me, I'm answering your question. <laughs> I said, do you think Zacchaeus was happy because he didn't have any friends? Because there was nobody he could talk to, nobody to, you know, be best buddies with him. He was not happy at all. Except he felt guilty. He felt heartbroken. He, 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 he lived a miserable life. And he wanted somebody to love him. Somebody who will be his friend. Somebody who will be there to the very end. Yes. Someone who will never leave him nor forsake him. Who will love him just because of who he is. Yes. He wanted somebody to come in and talk with him. Yes. To be with him. But nobody wants to be with a tax collector. He was a sinner. He was a thief. He was a crook. He stole things from everybody. Everybody hated him. So Zacchaeus, he went around... Miserable life, miserable self. Nobody to talk to. Just kept stealing things from people. <laughs> Until one day, he heard about Jesus. He heard how Jesus, he heals the sick, he raised the dead, the blind man's eyes were open, the, he touched the hill and touched the hill people. But the thing that caught his ear was that he could forgive sins. He could change a person, make them brand new. See, you want to know what Zachary said? He went to go see Jesus. He ran as fast as his little legs could go to go see Jesus, but then he stopped. He's like, wait a minute. I can't go see Jesus. I'm a sinner. Jesus don't want to be with me. I'm a thief. I'm a sinner. I'm a crook. He, he's a holy person. Yeah. Nobody, I mean, he would not want anybody to find me right beside him, talking to him. Forget it. He walks back home and then he thinks, wait a second. Isn't one of Jesus' disciples a tax collector just like me? Like, if you were uh, Matthew, Matthew is a tax collector. And you can forget Matthew. Because there was a crowd in front of him. 
I want to ask if the pastor and the elders will come forward. Don't worry, I won't embarrass you too much. Can you stand in front right here? They're standing in a straight line and look at the people. Small or big. Now I'm Zacchaeus. And Jesus is way over there. And so I'm trying to get to Jesus. But the crowd is in front of me. Now can I get around the crowd? Alright, let's, let's try this again. I'm Zacchaeus and I'm trying to get to Jesus. But I cannot get to Jesus because the crowd is in front of me. And not only that, but I'm short. You know, Zacchaeus is a short man. And, oh, and so he can not So you might as well give up. You can sit down. Thank you. So Zach is, he said, I'm going to give up. There's no way to get to Jesus because the crowd's in front of me. I'm short. I can't see about the people. You know, everybody's shouting and screaming. I can't yell about the crowd. I'm just going to go back home. But it's like, no. This is my only hope. Yeah. This is the only chance that I might have to see Jesus. So he kept going. He persevered. He went. He, he wanted to see Jesus. So he had an idea. He ran ahead of the crowd. He's way back here. The crowd's in front of him. So he runs up. Runs up and he sees the sycamore tree. And so he climbs up into the sycamore tree. And as he's looking down, he can see Jesus coming that way. And while Jesus and the whole crowd is coming their way, the crowd is still screaming and hollering, and Jesus, oh, save you, Jesus, you know? And all of a sudden, the crowd just stops right there, underneath the tree. It's actually like, what happened? Somebody lose something? You know, and he's just looking down, and then he heard a voice. He said, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Hurry up and come down. For today I'm going to your house. Oh, yeah. So he you know, he's just like, hold up now. Is this Jesus talking to me? Whoa. <laughs> and he started cheesing and grinning. He, he heard him and came down the tree. And he greeted Jesus. Jesus, right this way. And so he went to this house. And when he went to his house, he put everything else in the refrigerator. Everything in the deep freeze. He just cooked it up and put it on the table. He put everything he had on the table. This was a special case. This was Jesus at his house. And then, it was a group of people over here, like always. A group of people over here just sitting back, just talking about Zacchaeus, talking about how bad of a person he is. He's a crook. He's a thief. And no, he's a sinner. Why would Jesus want to come to a house of a sinner? You know, why can't he come to my house? And so the people right there in the crowd just talking about Zacchaeus, you know, having their own fit. Well, Zacchaeus over here having a good time talking with Jesus. And then he comes to Jesus. You know, he feels the guiltiness in his heart. He knows that he has to confess and just let it all up. Just give it all to Jesus. So he comes to Jesus and says, look, Jesus. Look, Lord. Just look around you. Everything you see around here. Every, I own all this stuff. But I'm going to give half of it to the poor. And if I've stolen anything from anybody, I will give him back that amount. But not only that, but I will give him four times as much. And Jesus, he smiled. And he said, today, salvation has come to this house. So is a son of God. In verse 10, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, he says, this is the reason why I came down here. I have come down here to seek and to save those which were lost. So that means he came for each and every person in this room. 
He came for all of us. He came yeah. to find us lost in the land. Uh -huh. He came for you. He came for me. He came for Zach. I mean, people just like Zacchaeus. Yeah. Now, Zacchaeus, he was rich, of course. He stole everything from everybody. He had the most beautiful home. He had the nicest Jordans. He had the gold. He had the finest clothes in all Jerusalem. I mean, he had it all. But you know, even though he had all this money, even though he had all the wealth, all the fame, fortune, well, he didn't have fame. Nobody, everybody hated him. But even though he had everything he wanted, he still put the emptiness yeah. on the inside. Yeah. You know, his heart kind of felt like a donut. You know, you know what a donut? How many of you ever seen a donut? You probably ate one today. <laughs> but a donut is like a round circle, you know, with the chocolate and the sprinkles and all types of stuff on there. But then it's a hole in the middle. Yeah. And so Zach is his heart was kind of like a donut, you know, just a big hole in the middle. And he tried to fill it up with getting more money. That didn't help. He stole more things. He he wanted to get more, but that did not fill the emptiness. And he knew that the only thing that could fill that emptiness was Jesus. The only person who could fill that emptiness in his heart was Jesus. Yes. He knew the money couldn't do it. Fame, fortune, you know, all the best clothes, everything. He knew it could not fill the emptiness. He knew that what he needed was salvation, yes. which is a free gift. Yes. And it only comes through Jesus. Yes. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. <coughs> when you get there, say amen. Yeah. Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest anyone should boast. So that plainly tells me that salvation is a free gift. We cannot earn it. We cannot buy it with money, but it's only a gift from God. Yeah. I want an adult to come forward and help me out with a little demonstration. I have a free gift. It's a free gift here for anybody who wants it. Come on here. You want a free gift, right? Let's go give it back. <laughs> now I want one of the kids to come up. Any kids? Oh, okay, that was the kid. <laughs> oh, everybody sit down. Sit down. All right, raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me ask you. All right, who knows the name of the short guy who climbed up a tree? What's that? Zaggies. All right, come on up. There you go. Pretty good. You're welcome. I'm kind of scared to ask another kid to come on. All right, the first kid up here gets the dog. Oh, all right, all right. Don't run. All right, one of them stay up here. One of them. All right, five of them do. Oh, Lord. There you go. Whoa. Oh, my God. All right, I'm rolling. All right, I'm very short. Kind of like Zacchaeus. But even though I'm sure like Zacchaeus, I'm not rich like that. So I'm sorry, I don't have any more change. But, let me explain. Here I'm up with a free gift. A dollar bill, five dollar bill. And it's for anybody who wants it. Just offer it to any of us. And like a lot of you adults, you sat down and didn't want to get up. And you missed that on the dollar bill. 
Miss Lois, and she jumped up like, look, I'm him. <laughs> and you know, she received the joyfully. And the kids, you know, they're about to run me over just to get the dollar. And you know, and she said, Daddy, 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 that's the same way with God and salvation. Yes. God is offering you a free gift. No yes. charge at all. All right. All right. All right. You see, the son of God. The son of God says you may receive this free gift. And all you have to do is come up and take it. Yes. And like, you can sit down in your chairs, you know, like you always do. You know, um, say, look, your son came and died. And, you know, that, that's just too much. I can't receive salvation. You know, I don't deserve it. Of course you don't deserve it, but he's given it to you as a free gift. Yeah. And if you can be like the kids in this altar here, who stands up and receives it joyfully, or you continue to sit down. But you know, I'm about to close. The Bible tells us, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that God commanded his love towards us. Yes. And that while we were yet sinners, yes. while we spit in his face, yes. while we put our crown of thorns on his head, yes. while we pierced his hands, you know, with nails through his hands, yes. while we crucified him, while we shut our fist in his face, because God, I don't need you. Yes. I can make it by myself. While we were yet sinners, yes. God, he loved us that much he sent his son yes. to die for us. Yes. John 3.16, if you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Shows that God loves us so much. That he sent his Son that, you know, some of us, you know, can go to heaven if we believe. That's not what the verse says. He didn't say just the black people or the white people. Not just the Hispanic or the, the Asian people, but it says anyone. Yeah. If all everybody who believes in me yeah. should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. But in Romans 6, I mean Romans 3.23, it says that we are sinners. It says for all the sin and the children of the Lord of God. Yes. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. So that puts us in a place of a sinner. We and Romans 6 with 3 shows us that the wages, the wages of sin is what? Yeah. It's death. So stop right there. We're all sinners. So that means we all deserve to die. We all deserve to be dead right now. But you know, God, He loves us so much that He sent His Son to die in our place. But the gift of God yes. is eternal life yes. through giving your tithes and all. Through giving half of your money to the poor. No. Through going to church, you know, every Sunday. No. Who is it through? It is through Jesus Christ. So we're all sinners. We all deserve to die. But because Jesus came and died on the cross for us, yeah. we all can receive the free gift of eternal life. Yeah. And tonight I'm going to make an invitation to you, to the youth, to the adults. I want to make an invitation that if you want to receive the free gift of eternal life, if you want to receive Jesus into your heart, if you want him to become your best friend, then I want you to come stand up here in front of me. The doors of the church are open. Yes. You know, if you want to say yes to Jesus, yes. if you want to have eternal life, if you want to go to heaven, yes. Jesus says, I am the way, yes. the truth, and the life. Yes. Nobody goes to the Father. Yes. Nobody goes to heaven. Yes. No one can receive eternal life. Yes. No one can receive this free gift of salvation. Yes. Except through Jesus. Yes. So if you don't have Jesus, you're not going to heaven. Amen. If you don't have Jesus, you're not going to receive His free gift of eternal life. Amen. How many of you want today, want you today, tonight, to receive Jesus into your heart, just like you received that dollar bill? How many of you tonight 
want to recommit your life to Christ. I mean, some of you have been baptized. You already accepted Jesus, but you know that you made some stupid decisions in your life. You know that you've been walking down this narrow way that leads to eternal life. But you're like, ooh, look at that. And you go off on the wide way. And if you want to come back in this narrow way, recommit your life to Christ, then this is your time. It is your time to come forth. So if there is anybody, then please stand and come to the front. And you know, if you want to have prayer, have special prayer to, for God to help you with your everyday life, to keep you on this narrow way, then you can come forward too. So the floor is open. You can come to the altar tonight. So is there anybody? Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. So that tells me that there's a mansion with my name. There's a mansion prepared for you. How do you want to go to heaven? Well, you can't be there unless you have Jesus. Unless you know Jesus. So if you do not know Jesus, and if you want to receive them to your heart today, if you want them to come in, then please come forth to the front. You know, Zacchaeus, when Jesus said, look, I'm going to your house, Zacchaeus didn't say, Jesus, you can't come over. You know, I'm a sinner. i got to clean up first. I have to, you know, fix my house up. I have to change my life up, you know, get it all straightened out. No. The Bible says, Zacchaeus received Jesus joyfully. And on some of you, you made some terrible mistakes. You're all a wretched sinner. And you're like, well, first I have to clean up. You know, I have to live a good life first before I let Jesus come in. She says, look, that's my job. Right. You let me in. Yeah. 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 So if there's anybody else, then please come forward. Revelation tells us that Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. He's knocking and says, look, I want to come in. But it is your choice, yeah. your decision. If you want to receive yeah. him, choice, let him come into your life. Let him come in and let him be the captain of your ship. Let him steer you. Or you can just ignore him. But it is your choice. And if you want to let him in, if you want to open the door for Jesus to come into your heart, then please come forward. So there's anybody else? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, yes. we thank you for your free gift of eternal life. Yes. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came and bled and died for us so that we may have that free gift of salvation. And tonight, we want to receive you joyfully in our hearts, like Zacchaeus did. We want to let you in. We're not going to ignore you any longer. But we're going to let you in, Jesus. And we want to let you take control of our life. We know that if we keep driving ourselves, we're going to wreck. So, Father, we want to give you the steering wheel. We want you to be the captain. And, Father, you see everyone who is standing up here tonight. You see everyone who is standing in their peace. I pray that you just please just come in right now. Come in and change them. If they need to be Tonight. We thank you so much. Thanks to Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord. Give me a job, Minister Buchanan. Come on, give me a hand tonight. Glory to God. He ministered the Word of God tonight. Amen. I, I, I've heard that story many times. Just didn't hear it on that one. A job tonight. Amen. Y'all a great job. This has been a wonderful program on tonight. They're trying to get in nobody's house and they ain't up there trying to get a hold of the drugs and the alcohol. They in the house of God. Yeah. Amen. 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 the word of God. Amen. It, it is a blessing, saints. It's a blessing. Amen. To serve God at an early age. At an early age. And I think he's been preaching since he was eight years old. Oh, ain't that wonderful? Give me a God. We just thank God for how he has ministered tonight and those that came under the call on tonight. Amen. I know it's a blessing just to be here tonight in this place. Amen. I 